Not connected by road with the rest of the province, Churchill is a lonely town sitting in northern Manitoba, by the vast shore of the Hudson Bay. Life in this town is very different compared to the rest of Manitoba. To learn about the people and the culture, I paid a visit to the It Sanitech Museum seven years after my first visit. The curator Lorraine. Was still there, telling visitors passionately about the local culture and the Inuit community that makes up a significant population of Churchill and the majority population of Nunavut. Churchill is very fortunate to have this museum, as it contained valuable pre-modern era artifacts about Canada's First Nations in the north, and a great curator whose dedication and love for the Churchill area are true to the heart. After catching up with Lorraine, it was around 4:30 in the afternoon. Due to Churchill's location in the north, the sun was about to set on this early November day. Yeah, and、uh, right now it's only、uh, about 4:30 in the afternoon, and、uh, as you can see, it's already getting dark. So、uh, I guess、uh, I'll go back to the hotel. A lot of the places will close after 6 p.m. Including the grocery store and、uh, restaurants, so I'm gonna、uh, maybe just call it a day. Tomorrow morning, I will resume the tour of Churchill. For dinner, I ordered pork roast with vegetables. I also went to the supermarket right across the street and grabbed some beer made in Nipawa, Manitoba. Cheers! It's pretty good. The only reason why I ordered this specific combo is that it comes with vegetables, but the veggies is just some carrots, broccoli. Looks like they were all frozen vegetable. I know it's very difficult to get fresh veggies here. The only way to get to Churchill is either air or、uh, the railway. So that means everything else will come、uh, either this way or that way as well. Or sometimes, well, if the bay is not frozen, they might get a shipment from、uh, Quebec from other places via the Hudson Bay. I'm really surprised that. It has changed a lot since the last time I was here. When I first came here,、um, there were no cell phone coverage. Everything was super expensive. I went to the supermarket. A jar of milk, one liter, would cost like seven, eight dollars. But now I went in and realized the price is、uh, not as dramatic as before. Still a little bit more expensive. For example, cucumber. A single cucumber would still cost you like seven dollars. But everything else, especially prepackaged food,、uh, probably just a dollar or two more than Winnipeg, which, to my surprise, wasn't the case last time I was here. Yeah, things have changed a lot. Like the price difference is、uh, not as、uh, dramatic as before, and this is all thanks to the the railway. Yeah, the story about the railway was that it was actually、uh, when I came here. In 2013, was actually owned by an American company, and the company really struggled. But then a disaster came, washed the、uh, the, the railway, but the、uh, American company didn't want to pay for it. So eventually, the Canadian government and the local communities、uh, were able to come up with a plan, and then purchased the、uh, the ownership from the American company. And now it's actually、uh, the railway is. 2018, I think, it opened again. Now it's owned by the community and the Canadian government, and this actually did help、uh, reduce a lot of the prices and the port, which was shut down for 
decades now is reopened. Yeah, and I heard um, the reason why milk is not expensive anymore is because now they're getting subsidies from um, the federal government. And part of it actually comes from the carbon tax, that's what I heard. Yeah, I didn't know what carbon tax was for until I uh, learned from this trip. All right, folks, I've got some bad news. I was on my way to my favorite restaurant in Churchill, which was called Gypsies. And upon coming to the address, uh, there's nothing. And then somebody who just passed by told me that the restaurant burned down a couple years earlier. And the only thing that's remaining is this sign, which still says uh, the name of the restaurant. Well, a lot of things changed. Oh my gosh, this is such a huge loss to the community. This place was run by a uh, Portuguese family providing excellent food, and coffee, and bakery stuff. Unfortunately, uh, it has become history. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's gone forever. So the plan for today is I'm gonna uh, finish the tour of the town of Churchill. Yeah, the road is already covered with snow everywhere. And I've been hearing uh, uh, snow trucks plowing the snow over the whole night. Yeah, this is how deep the snow is. You would expect Churchill to be somewhere mostly black and white. However, the town is home to a large amount of murals painted by international artists. There are also plenty of murals just outside of the town, which I'll show you in another episode when we do a tour of Churchill's surrounding area. So the blue building over there, that's a building for the Polar Bear International. So this is an international organization that advocates for the protection of polar bears and the Arctic environment. The funny thing is, when I bought this parka, uh, this one was the special PBI edition. And I had no idea uh, what it was. And even has a, uh, a logo on the, uh, on the arm. And this is the exact same logo as the one on that building. When I bought this jacket, I had no idea what that is. And just knowing that I was supporting a good cause. But I didn't know that uh, uh, one day I would come to uh, Churchill again and uh, uh, wearing this parka and also uh, seeing the uh, organization that I supported uh, through buying this uh, jacket. And of course, I'm gonna go in there and pay a visit. Unfortunately, the Polar Bear International House was not open at that time. I will come back later when it's open. And of course, over there, that's the uh, uh, the only grocery store, the only supermarket in the town of Churchill. You can literally buy everything there from uh, groceries, alcohol, to winter jackets, to uh, a lot of other things. So if you uh, forgot to pack a winter jacket or you feel like you need extra supplies, uh, well, I mean, this is the only place to check out. Despite of having a small population, Churchill is home to many scientific institutions with focuses on climate change, wildlife studies, marine biology, and northern studies. Out of everything, 
This impressed me the most. Yeah, I'm at the uh, unofficial weather station of Churchill. I think it's pretty uh, accurate. Unlike 99% of other small towns in Canada, Churchill is served by a train station. The station itself is also home to Parks Canada office, where you will learn more about the nearby Wapask National Park and the historic sites near Churchill. All right, so uh, like I said, uh, you can only reach Churchill uh, mostly through two ways, by air and by rail. So. This building here is uh, Churchill's train station and uh, uh, I think there are two trains that depart from Winnipeg uh, to Churchill every week. I can see there are some cars gathering uh, over there at the parking lot so I assume uh, there must be a train within the uh, next couple hours maybe. Uh, so uh, maybe these uh, uh, cars are here to pick up the uh, incoming passengers. It looks like the passenger train just arrived. In the town of Churchill, there's one structure you can't miss, the massive Port of Churchill building. Originally built in the 1930s, when I first saw it, I thought it was a nuclear power plant from the former Soviet Union. The building over there, that's the uh, Port of Churchill building. Yeah, back in the days where Churchill was first founded, it was like the main place for uh, fur trading by the Hudson Bates Company very early years in the 17th century. And uh, this is the place basically where, um, you know, the Hudson Bay uh, Company started and which eventually led to the monopoly of the fur trade in North America and somehow in the end pushed the creation of Canada. Nowadays, the port of Churchill is used as a gateway for shipping Canadian wheat to the world. For some Arctic cruise passengers, it is also their port of entry to the province of Manitoba and also Canada. Churchill's location is very unique. It sits on the boundary of the tree line. That means you will see one part of the surrounding area covered with trees, whereas the other parts are simply barren tundra lands with lots of shrubs. The best location to see this is right by the Port of Churchill building on the bank of the Churchill River. Okay, so behind me is the uh, Churchill River. Uh, during the summer months, uh, this is uh, the place where you can see huge amount of beluga concentrating. Well, I mean, technically, uh, you can also see them in Hudson Bay, but uh, this is an area where you uh, can actually take a boat or uh, rent a kayak, and then you can go into the river and uh, interact with the belugas themselves.
Based on the recommendations from the locals, I found my new go-to place for meals, the Lazy Bear Lodge Cafe. It is certainly a lot fancier than the Gypsy's Bakery, but overall, it's a very good value for what you get. For lunch, I ordered the Arctic Chard Sandwich and a Chai Latte. Churchill is a small town with massive buildings. There is another one right in the town center. You know what? It is actually the town center building. Okay, so uh, the building behind me is Churchill's all-in-one community building. It has uh, schools, hospital and recreation centers. This massive building just has it all. I was trying to finally check out what's inside this massive building. However, due to the global event of 2020, it was closed for non-essential visits. And of course, this building here, this is where I ended the tour yesterday. So I'm gonna end the walking tour of Churchill here today as well. Of course, our Churchill adventure didn't just end there with a tour of the town. In the next episode, we'll explore the surrounding area of Churchill and see firsthand how the local community learned to live with the cruel nature in this part of the Hudson Bay region. Thank you.